Let's get this toothing plane back into shape. I already restored the first plane of my inherited set, but it was still missing a comrade. Until I found this toothing plane that matches my set nearly perfectly. You can see that the blade is mounted very upright, which makes it rather a scraping than a cutting plane. Its body was pretty dirty with oily dust and spots of paint sticking on the surface. Apart from that, the wood was in good condition. The blade was a bit rusted and covered in dirt. Toothing planes are used for veneering or if you have tear out with other planes. Bill Shanner has a nice introduction about them on his channel if you want to know more. This one actually still works pretty well. You can see that instead of creating a smooth surface, it leaves little grooves. Such planes are often abused as scrub planes because you need relatively little force when the blade is set deep. The sole was in pretty okay shape so that I didn't need to put a new one on. Usually you should hit the body on the top to remove the blade and not on the wedge's side like I did. I glued sanding paper of 80, 120 and 240 grit to an old piece of countertop. This allows me to sand down the plane's faces evenly. You start on the coarsest grit and high spots should show up as brighter wood. Later you can mark the area with a pencil to see if you take off material evenly. When I checked whether the sole was leveled with a combination square, I found out that one side of the body was a bit tilted. So I decided to only use the straight side as reference. Not all edges were completely planed down, but this is okay as I created a bevel on them later anyway. I didn't like the old color and so I decided to sand it down. This also got me rid of the paint spots. During this process I could also straighten the tilted side of the body. The wood smelled a bit moist but was still in good condition. As I didn't want to take off the handle which was still tight in place, sanding the top was a bit difficult and meant a lot of fiddly handwork. The same was true for the decorative grooves. I then rounded the edges so that they wouldn't get caught on wood or create scratches when using the plane. Now I could pass over to 120 and 240 grit. The wedge had to undergo the same procedure. You can round the back of the mouth a bit so that it slips over little bumps easily, but the edge on the front should stay sharp to hold down the wood as close to the blade as possible. My next step was to wash off the sanding dust with soaking wet cloth. While the wood is drying, I start to take care of the blade. For me, the best way to get rid of rust and dirt is to use a drill with a copper brush. Make sure to wear safety glasses as particles can severely hit your eyes otherwise. The result was pretty neat for my taste and it came out that this was a high quality blade from Kirschen. In the meantime the wood had dried and I got rid of loose fiber ends with 400 grit sanding paper. I used 3 coats of kettleboard linseed oil as finish. As each of them needs to dry for some hours, I could take care of the blade again. Generally it looked fine, but a closer inspection showed that somebody put a lousy wavy edge on it. That meant I had to take a lot of material off, and so I started on a 100 grit diamond stone. Water with dish detergent works fine as grinding fluid. Before getting rid of the wave, I need to get the back flat. I needed to find a compromise between having a clean tip and keeping enough of the teeth though. The next passes were done on a 400 grit diamond stone and 1000 and 3000 grit water stones. This treatment of the back usually has to be done only once in a tool's lifetime. To sharpen the blade I put it on the stone at about 30 degrees and push it forward. The natural motion will lift the tip slightly up and thus create a camber. I've never noticed anything bad about such a beveled edge and this method saves me a honing guide. From the shiny areas you can see that the previous grind was so crooked that material was taken off very unevenly. It was okay for me to still have small low spots at the sides as these will be taken away with future sharpenings. The next pass on 1000 grit created a burr that needed to be taken away by just a few strokes on the back. After the 3000 grit stone I rubbed some polishing paste on my strop and gave the blade some good dozen strokes. Finally I removed the burr from this procedure with a single pull on the back. Ballistol is my choice of oil to prevent the blade from rusting. 
to mount the plane, I put it on a flat surface, put the blade so that the teeth point to the front, and then fasten it with a wedge. When I then tap the wedge with a wooden hammer, it usually sets the blade to the right depth for me. You need to control if it sits straight though. It's really a joy to work with such a nice tool, and it's great to see how nice small grainy shavings it creates. Look how nicely the old owner's mark came out. Can you believe that this grain was hidden under dirt and paint? Tell me if you have plans to restore an old tool. If you enjoyed watching T-Cube, click the like button to let us know you want more videos about woodworking. Get Cube to get notified about the latest news and uploads. And subscribe or follow us on your favorite social media and spread the word to help us improve. Thank you for any support, it really helps.